Ladies and gentlemen, go to the book of Luke chapter 24. Go to the book of Luke chapter 24. Yes. We're going to read from, we're going to read 12 verses. I think from verse 1. 12 verses. I will try not to stretch the message, but I'll try to bring it straight to you. Okay? Let's stand for the reading of the word. You may be seated. Now, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the, to the, stone, co uh, the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed, in other words, surprised about this, that behold, two men stood by, by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Did you hear that question? Let's continue. Now, okay, okay, he is he's not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Continue to be faster. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them and who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them, to the apostle, like idle tales and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb and st uh, stooping down and he saw the linen clothes and lying by themselves. And he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Is that 12? Oh, we're 12. Okay, right. Father, we thank you. Speak your word. In Jesus' name, we're listening. Amen. Be seated. Touch your neighbor and say uh, a resurrected life. Say it again. Say, resurrected life. Say, don't look for me in wrong places. Say, neighbor, I am no more there. <laughs> you see that Jesus passed through the difficult moments even before he died before he rose again he dealt with a number of things he dealt with the rejection of the Pharisees he dealt with the betrayal of Judas he dealt with the denial of Peter he dealt with uh, the people in Galilee, in, in the place in Nazareth where he was born, when he was trying to teach, and they say, where did he know these things from? We know this is the son of Joseph and Mary. You know, we know he, James's brother. We know his sisters. What is he trying to be and all of those things? Where does he get all this power to heal the people? So Jesus dealt with rejection. Jesus dealt with, uh, Jesus dealt not just with, uh, 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 with, with, with rejection, but he dealt also with uh, 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 his name being dragged, you know, in the mud because even the Pharisees weren't and told the people that the spirit he's using is not the spirit of God, but it's the spirit of Baal the king or the lord of the demons so they they, they 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 spoke to jesus as if he's a demon or speaking about him so i want to paint the picture for you to understand that as he is coming to the grave and now he's resurrected from from the dead that he had suffered it's not only the cross that he suffered but the cross was severe, the cross was cruel, the cross was so bad, you know, with excruciating pain. But 
the cross was not the only thing that he suffered. And death was not the only thing that Jesus Christ suffered. Jesus had a journey of pain and the journey of disappointment. Jesus had a lot of, dis lot of, dis of disciples that he was, were following him. But the Bible tells us about the hundreds of disciples and other people that left him. They just left him and did not believe in him again. So in other words, he has suffered from the people that he trusted and they turned around and they did not trust him and did not believe in him. Are you hearing me? I'm not sure if you have ever been in a place where you had people not believing in you anymore, not looking at you the way they used to look at you and, uh, you know, things like that. So Jesus has passed through that. Jesus has passed through gossip. He has passed through gossip, you know. Yeah, he has, he has, passed, he has passed through uh, 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 people uh, uh, twisting their nose and, 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 and looking down on him. He has, he has passed through all that. Let me tell you something. The Bible in the book of, uh, of, 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 of Hebrews, it says that he has, we have a priest that has suffered from all sides, from all angles. You know, he has suffered from all angles. In other words, whatever you are going through, Jesus knows about it. So if you go through loneliness, Jesus knows about it. He was alone. He was left alone. You know, he had times where he cried alone. He had times where he prayed alone. He had times where he wanted his disciples to be with him when he was struggling in Gethsemane. And he was saying to God, may this cup pass away. May I not go to the cross. But his disciples, he had times where people were misunderstanding him. Even the disciples uh, misunderstood him at times. So if you are at a place where you are misunderstood, understood at times and people misunderstand you you are not alone Jesus had suffered that and Jesus had gone through that are you hearing me so these are the things he suffered before he died but amazing thing is this then he was on the cross and on the cross Jesus was never supported even by one person except the mother are you hearing me his disciples, they fled for their lives because they did not want to be crucified with him. Nobody was there for him but only the mother. Are you hearing me? And on the cross we see the love of a parent. The love of a parent is above the love of your wife. Nobody can love you like your mother. You did not hear what I said to you. I'm saying the only person that was there was John, John, and also the mother of Jesus that was there when Jesus was dying and bleeding on the cross. Are you hearing that? The mother's love is permanent. Wife's love and husband's love, we don't know what may happen in the future. But the mother's love has no divorce. You cannot be divorced from your mother. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say to you? So Jesus, the love that kept him going and gave him the support. Remember that John was there as the disciple, but John was there because he has received the love from Jesus. So he was supporting Jesus based on what Jesus has done. But Mary was not there because of what Jesus has done. He was not, she was not there because Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead or Jesus has, had, had loved her. Because the love of a mother, the mother bond with a child while the child is still in the womb. Are you here? I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's, what, that's what happens. So John is there as a disciple because Jesus has impacted him. But Mary is not there because Jesus has impacted him. Uh, uh, impacted him. She is there because this is the blood of her blood, the bones of her bones, and the flesh of her flesh. Not maritally, I mean really, not metaphorically. Like your wife, like your husband. But genetically, according to the genes. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you the truth. There is no love like the love of the mother. If you know the person that can be with you through thick and thin, you are still a son. You are divorced. You are still my son. 
you have messed up, you are still my son. You are in court, you are still my son. The judge is about to, you are a criminal, you are still my son. The judge is about to hand over a sentence to you. The mother will cry and beg the judge. Even when you are a killer. She still does not want you to die. Like the people you killed. There's something about the love of the mother that goes beyond the faults. That goes beyond the mistakes. That goes beyond the, 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 the shame. That goes beyond the... I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. Mothers love straight away. Fathers are different. Fathers may say, yeah, at least maybe 10 years in jail, this young chap will wake up. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I not speaking the truth here? Yeah, the father, yeah. The father is like, what the mother is crying and the mother is rolling my child. <laughs> father is saying, no, no, he needs to go to jail. Yeah, I've been talking to this guy long time. He does not listen. Maybe 10 years in jail will wake him up. Maybe when he comes back, he will be a, a decent young man. Fathers are different. But unfortunately, you need that side too. Fathers will leave you in pain. Trusting that the pain will produce the character in you. Jesus got the name that he did not have before. The name that is above every name. Oh, I feel like teaching this morning. Can I teach? He got the name that is above every name. Through pain. The Bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered. But obedience to who? To the Father. To the Father. The Father allowed him to go through pain and suffering. He's struggling in Gethsemane and is begging the Father to change his mind. And the Father is silent. As long as Jesus is saying, let this cup pass, the Father is saying nothing and doing nothing. If it was Mary, Mary would have said, my, my child, please don't go. If it's difficult, please. Just let, let these people die. They are sinful anyway, you know. But the father was focused on the goal. Jesus cried. He prayed three times. When he prayed for the third time and saw that God is not answering, then he changed his mind. He said, not my will. And he said, but your will. When he said your will, the Bible says God sent an angel instantly. Not to change the plan but to strengthen him to move forward to the cross your father will push you to the cross your father wants you to take pain as a man you did not hear what I'm saying are you hearing me any father that protects a son from the pain he is destroying the world it is the pain that creates character it is the pain that creates maturity it is the pain that makes a man a man a man is a man by taking the pain and not losing himself the reason today we've got young men who are committing suicide is because they are I almost said something I'm not sure it's an insult to what if somebody told me that word as well the, the reason why they kill themselves is because they are weak. They are emotionally weak. It's because they have no backbone. It's because they have no character. Suicide is for cowards. Suicide is for small-minded people. You have to be small-minded to kill yourself. You have to be small-minded because you don't see beyond you only see here a father will allow you to go through the pain but a mother will love you while you are going through it and you need both you need a father who's gonna sit in heaven who's not a come not gonna come by himself who's gonna send an angel he is not coming by himself Go see that boy, strengthen him. Let him do the... The only time the father will come, it's when you are dead to raise you. 
You did not hear what I said to you. Did you hear what I said to you? The father will not come. That he will introduce you. This is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Blah, 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 blah. And all of those things. And everything. Lightning, everything happens. And then it then goes away. Then he leaves you with the world. He leaves you with enemies. He, leave you, he leaves you with struggle. So you get it. The work of the father is not to love. Though fathers should love. The work of the father is to produce the generation that will be effective, that can face anything. I want you to say something when Jesus is speaking to John, the revelator. He says to John, John, do not worry. He says, I am he who was dead. He says, but I conquered death. He says, I'm alive now, forevermore. In other words, death has lost its grip. I can look at it in the face and it can run away. It cannot control me. The Father brings you into the space of control, of power, of influence. That's where the Father, the Father has to bring you there. Any father that does not develop control in you is killing you. But control is developed through suffering. Through the things that you suffer. The silence of the father is part of training. Fathers who speak to you all the time, they are mothers. They are fathers with characteristics of being a mother. Let's check. How many times did God, speak, uh, God the father speak to Jesus? How many times? How many times? Huh? When he was baptized, right? Number two, when he was on the mountain, when he was transfigured, right? Right? In fact, we see about two times the father spoke. And the last action of the father, we see him raising the son from the dead. So God brings the mother who's going to pat you on the back, who's going to say, who's going to minister to you with her tears when you go through. The father's tears are not internal. They are external. They swallow it. They see you are going through a tough time. They, say, they, they, they swallow their tears. Not they don't feel it, but they are more committed to the purpose than to your feelings. So God the Father is more connected to the salvation of the masses more than the pain of Jesus. Even when Jesus cries and says, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? The Father was silent on the cross. She, he did not say a word. Because if somebody is going through the cross and as a father you speak a lot, you may divert that person. So the father has to be silent so that the character can be developed, so that the anointing can be sharpened. Is, is, that, is that clear to you? You see, I'm trying to say to you, the God, the father in heaven, he's dealing with all of us like that. No matter you're a woman believer or you're a man believer, because the Bible says all of us are the sons of God. So God, if you have never felt neglected by God, you are not a child of God. If you have never felt as if God is not hearing you, is not answering you, he's leaving you alone, you are not a child of God. All of us have to go through that because that's the strategy of the Father. That's how he works. That's how he creates the character. That's how he leaves you alone and wants to see if the DNA that is in you will cause you to seek after him, to say, I want you, I don't feel you. I want your Lord God I seek how can you seek his face if you feel him he has to leave you now if I say he has to leave you please it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of it's a metaphor right okay in other words he has to leave you with a feeling 
that he's not with you. Yeah. And look if you're going to seek him. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? Sometimes you wake up and you feel like you are not a believer. You are dry. You feel, my God, am I really saved today? At that time, he is creating hunger for intimacy. He wants to know if you're going to close the door and say, God, all I want is you. I just want you. <laughs> then that's where he, cre he creates the character and the intimacy and things like that. Are you hearing me? So Jesus has gone through all of that. Right? And then now, Jesus is in the grave. He's in the grave now. In the grave, Jesus, <laughs> listen, he goes through death to the grave, hoping that God will raise him. Did you hear what I said to you? I mean, can you go through death hoping that the person who promised to raise you will raise you? So Jesus went through death knowing that the Father is going to raise him up. He went through suffering knowing that the Father is going to raise him up. His body was taken to the grave but knowing and trusting and having faith that the Father will raise him up. Confidence in God. As I'm explaining, God wants us to live resurrected lives. A resurrected life is a life that is immune to poverty immune to sickness immune to drug addiction immune to you know it's, it's a, a resurrected life it's a life of victory it's a life that's not limited it's a life that when Jesus Christ the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead and he went to his disciples he went to his disciples they were closed they, they were closed in, in the, in the, in the uh, 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 they closed themselves because they were afraid to, to be crucified and the Bible says Jesus entered without opening the door they locked the door but he entered through the locked door because when you are from death you have no limitation and you have no fear when you have conquered when you have cried when you have defeated sickness when you have are you what i'm trying to say to you you have such boldness that other people do not have when you have suffered and then god delivered you when you have cried and god heard your cry then you have you have a totally different mindset from the people are you what i'm trying to say to you i mean that the, the bible says that if we suffer with jesus the bible says we shall rule with him in life so if we suffered and take the pain and and take the trouble and take the challenges that the Bible says we shall rule with him we cannot rule with him if we did not suffer we cannot rule with him if we did not cry we did not we cannot rule with him if we did not try and say Lord Lord why have you forsaken me if we did not pass through the time of being forsaken through the time of pain then we cannot rule with him touch your neighbor and say take it say whatever you're suffering take it if it's a marital problem take it if it's loneliness take it if it's disease take it if it's unemployment take it because out of this something great is about to happen because the bible says all work together for good for those who are called by his purpose the bible says it will work for good something is gonna come right when things are going wrong it means something is gonna come right when things are silent it means god is gonna bring you to the time where you shall laugh when you cry you shall laugh when you are alone you shall be embraced when you are fearful you shall be bold you have to go through it touch your neighbor and say go through it you must go through it you must go through it 
you must go through suffering you must go through home challenges you must go through job challenges you must go through fear though i walk through the fear of death i shall fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your stuff they comfort me until god comforts you in the valley of the shadow of death until god comforts you when there's nobody who's there for you until god comforts you and give you the word that my child everything is gonna be okay yeah there's a side of god you don't know touch your neighbor and say take it and take it and take it touch your neighbor and say take it take it take it it's hard but take it it's difficult but take it it's not every problem that god wants to deliver us from other problems are divinely orchestrated God does not want to deliver you from every problem because other problems are allowed by him to make you so God can deliver you from the problems but at times God can deliver you through the problem. In other words, he does not take you away from the problem. He allows you to go through the problem. You are not going in, you are going through. Like David says, though I go through the shadow of death. In other words, if you are through, then you're going to be out. It's through, out. There are problems no matter how much you fast. Jesus could not fast against the cross. Did you hear what I said to you? Jesus could not fast against the, against the cross. His prayers could not be heard. I know some people say all oh, the prayers of Jesus are heard. No, no, no. The one in Gethsemane was denied. The one in Gethsemane was what? Let this cup pass away from you, me, right? Did the cup pass? It did not pass. So Jesus was not answered. Huh? Are you hearing that? Because the pain that he was going to suffer was in the will of God. The pain was what? In the will of God. And if we follow through, the Bible says that he was crucified outside Jerusalem. And the Bible says for our example, for us to follow suit. In other words, we also have our crucifixion. Jesus Christ says, come and follow me. He does not tell you where you go. You are going to the cross, baby. Before resurrection, there's a cross. He says, pick up your cross. He says, pick up what? Didn't Jesus say, pick up what? Whose cross? He has picked his. He says, now it's, ten, it's a ten for you to do what? To pick up what? Come on, somebody say your cross. Somebody say my cross. The cross is not for massage. The cross is for crucifixion. Huh? So in other words, Jesus says that you have to pick up your things. He's training you like I picked up my cross. Like I faced my cross. Like I faced my pain. Like I faced my betrayers. I want you to face the same. He says, so when it's time for your cross, don't cry like a goat. When it's time for your cross, you must pick up what? There is no resurrection without the cross. There's no resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never have a greatest breakthrough without a greatest challenge. You will never have joy unspeakable without having serious misery. You will never be celebrated without being rejected. You'll never feel love and, 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 and treasure love without knowing how is it to be hated. I can prove it to you. 
The parents who love their kids and who protect them from everything like that, they tend to be spoiled and they become a thorn to their parents. Yeah. This child, I loved it. This child, I bought all the toys for this. You were killing the child. Children must go through pain in order to be human, in order to have wisdom. David says, before I was a straight, I was a straight, I went astray. He, he, he says that he was, he was what? Before he went astray, you know? He says, after I was a straight, he says, I knew, he said, before I was afflicted. He says, I did not know your ways. But he says, after I was afflicted, he says, I knew your ways. There are things we only know by pain. It's not every pain that comes to kill you. Other pains are carrying the purpose. There is a side of God that we will not know if we don't go through certain things. I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say to you. Are you hearing me? There's a certain level. Oh God. You, you need to know one thing that your pain is pushing you to your destiny and to your purpose. The, the cross of Jesus and the nails and the rejection was pushing Jesus to the name that is, ev that is above every name so that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We can't just confess in the air. We have to see him suffer. We have to see him cry. We have to see him crucified. We have to see his blood flowing. We have to see him in the grave. We have to see the grave being cemented. We have to see the soldiers surrounding the grave. We have to see the soldiers with weapons. But not only that, but we have to see him rising in front of his enemies. Rising again to life. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to rise. Touch your neighbor, I'm going to rise. This problem that I have, they are not forever. These challenges that I have, they are not forever. This pain that I'm facing is not forever. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pass through this because Jesus is bringing me to resurrection. He wants me to have a resurrected life, a victorious life. These challenges are not forever. I will take them because He has promised me. Are you? I'm trying to say to you. Touch your neighbor and say, take it. Before I close, let me explain this point I'm trying to make to you. The Bible says God will not give you a temptation, a trial that is above what you can carry or bear. In other words, that heaviness that comes on you, it has a purpose. It drives you there are people here, if you were grown in a perfect family with a mother and father and perfect marriage, you wouldn't be here. But there's a pain in you of rejection, of not growing right. You know, going, wanting yourself, who you are, and, and all those, and, and that created a space for God. I wish I could talk to you. Are you hear what I'm trying to say to you? Uh, did you hear what I'm trying to say to you? If you were not born the way you were born, if you did not suffer the way you suffered, you wouldn't have known Jesus the way you know Jesus. You wouldn't even be in the church. Let me tell you something. Some of you don't get it. Let me tell you something. If you go to England, it's a first world, world country. They have a... Uh, uh, pounds they live well the most most of them don't know poverty they don't know lack they don't know anything so 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 now can, let me tell you something have you ever known the first thing the first people that jesus preached to were not the rich he said the spirit of the lord has anointed me he has anointed me to preach the good news to what to the poor he started with the poor because the poor are on top on God's agenda. The country
countries that have their economy booming, normally they don't want Jesus. In England, churches are being closed. They are changed into museums. Why? Because if you have everything that you want at any time you want and ever, you have no need of God. There are problems that are, strat divine, that are strategically, divinely given to you. And those problems are there to save your life. Many of us, I can tell you the truth, probably 90% of us, if we grew up in England, will be, Jesus, who is that? That is why the biggest churches are in the places that are most struggling. In Nigeria, I told you last week, there is a church that has an auditorium. Auditorium, I mean a world, not, not a hockey a world class built auditorium with echo and everything and Israel, everything, that it sits hundred thousand people hundred thousand people where is it in Nigeria in Nigeria three thousand rand three thousand naira their currency is thirty five rand Did, are you getting me are you getting me they are hungry for God more than us. You know what? Because us are still doing well, even we think we are not. I, 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 I still, I, I, are you hearing me? They have nothing from the government. Nobody gets anything from the government. There's no subsidy from the government. You can't have two children and get two pays from the government or something. No, no, there's nothing like that. You see? So you see, where there's much more trouble and poverty, there's more God. Where there's economy and everything is flowing, those people, they don't want God. If you want prayer, don't go to England. Go to Africa. If you want miracles, if you want the anointing, the anointing, go to Africa. Rich countries have no time for God. I've been there. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? I've been there. I've been there in churches as well, preaching, hey, and people are standing. You see, these ones are emotional. They don't know the word. Yeah? Yeah, I'm telling you. We have a privilege here. We don't even know it that we have a privilege. We have a level of God that you cannot find. In European countries. We know the side of God. That they don't know. I watched a video. I think it was this morning or yesterday. I think it was this yesterday. This morning. I watched a video. In one of the I think European countries. So this believer chooses to go. And ask people on the street. Just on the street. It was all white. I did not see black. That's why I assumed it was not in South Africa. <laughs> He's asking people. Um, do, you, do you believe in Jesus? I'm not sure if somebody saw it. Do you believe in Jesus? He asked many people, do you believe in Jesus? But those people going and, uh, with their wives and family and they just going there. They said, no, 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 no. Can you believe it? They say, no, no, no. Yeah. And the other one says, I thought he died. <laughs> yes. You see, they, they just, listen, they just don't Care. Are you hearing me? And I can't blame them because if I was born like them and experienced what they experienced, I would surely be answering like them. Sometimes what you cry about is your advantage. Every pain you faced was pushing you to the revelation of God. Growing without a father was pushing you to God so that you'll discover God as a father. 
growing neglected without your parents away moving from house to house whatever it is David says when my mom and dad forsook me he said the Lord picked me up sometimes you need to be forsaken for God to pick you up sometimes you need to go through divorce for Jesus to pick you up sometimes you need to be rejected by your family Sometimes you need to have problems with your sisters and brothers, blood sisters and brothers, for Jesus to be able to come to you and to reveal himself to you. But after going all these things that you went through, then God wants to raise you. You know, see, when he raises you, he raises you back to the people who rejected you. He's raising you back to the people who crucified you. He's raising you back. Are you hearing that? Because now he's going to make you more powerful, more resilient, more greater. Somebody say, I resurrected. I the Bible says uh, in baptism, we are, it's a symbol that we die with him and then we resurrect with him. You know, we die with him and what? We're resurrected with him. Let, let me tell you something. The resurrected life, here's the issue. Jesus could not be found in anything that was associated with his pain and his shame. So the angel is saying, why do you associate him with what he has conquered? He is not here. Somebody say, he is not here. He, not here. he has reason. He does not look like you last saw him. He has reason. He does not, are you what I'm trying to say to you? He is not in the same condition like you last saw him. He has reason. He is more content, more glorious now. When I was thinking in the morning, the Lord said to me, I have to tell you that God is raising some of you from the grave, whatever grave it may be, but to a resurrected life. The life of victory. The life of confidence. The life of influence. The life of prosperity. The life of health. The life of miracle, the life of boldness. God says that He is resurrecting you. If they are looking for the timid you, the one that was timid, the one that had no confidence, God says they're gonna be disappointed because you are not there. If they are looking for a young man that is a failure, that is eating the drugs, and that is a drunkard, God says, I'm taking you away from you there. You are resurrecting into power. If they are looking for somebody who's lonely and somebody who's begging and and somebody who's crying and somebody who's complaining God says you are resurrected from there you are in the place of influence touch your neighbor and say I have moved from there say I've moved from there I have moved from there I don't think like I used to think I have moved from there I don't think poverty anymore I have moved from there I have resurrected I think differently I do differently are you friend trying to say to you you thought of me as a poor person but God is transforming me and is taking me from one level into another level the devil is a liar my poverty I am coming out it is not forever if you knew my business was struggling but I'm here to tell you now that I am no more there do not look for me over there because I have shifted to another level if you knew me as a pastor of a small church change your mind because God I'm in the process 
he's moving me he's adding people he's multiplying I feel like preaching in the name of Jesus I have moved from there I've been unemployed but God is in the process of giving me a job I've been looking for promotion but God is in the process of opening the world the doors and the windows of heaven you ended me as a single lady you're gonna be surprised at what God has prepared for me somebody shout I am no more there I doubted God but I'm no more there I cried but I'm no more there I had a low self-esteem but I'm no more there the devil is a lie I have risen I have risen I have risen to power I have risen to influence I have risen to glory I have risen the devil is a lie when you look for me you will not find me I don't have so low self-esteem anymore when you look for me now I'm confident the devil is a liar you are looking for me in the wrong place you look down on me where you are looking I am no more there I don't allow anybody to look down on me I have shifted if you thought somebody who had anger and had no love I was broken but now I'm healed I can love I can even love my enemies I am not there touch your neighbor and say I am not there touch your neighbor and say I'm not there I am not there my mind is changed my mind is empowered my mind is different I talk different I think different I walk different the devil is a liar I'm a totally changed person I'm changed I am changed I am transformed I am glorified I am lifted in the name of Jesus I may be still poor but I'm confident I may be still poor but I'm focused I can still poor but I have a vision and sooner or later I'm coming out of this touch your neighbor and say I'm coming out of this pastor I had a pastor who who visited us uh, in the other church the other church the first the other church uh, he he visited us I think we're still attending the school somewhere and uh, he came there and, uh, and then the other time he came when he came for the second time now we're at the auditorium in Makaza he was so perplexed he was it was so amazing. He said, is it the same you? He said, is, the, is, is it the same church? Maybe thought I was invited by this wonderful huge church, you know. And I said to him, it's the same church. The only thing in your mind, you are looking for it. In a wrong place. Because people always think that the way they have known us is the way we will always be. I'm not sure if you hear me. That's what they say. That, that's, that's what people say. Yeah. Yeah. God can shift you. Can shift. They can call you and educated today and find you with a PhD tomorrow. God can shift. As children of God, we cannot be confirmed, conformed. Cannot be conformed. As children of God, we cannot, cannot. 
This morning I decided that I'm moving. I'm moving for what people may have thought that I am. I may look the same, but when you look inside, my mind is totally different. My mind is totally changed. I no more think the same way. When I read this word, I said, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I challenge you this morning. If you are still in the place of struggle, shift. How do you shift? Shift. You're going to see God doing things that you never thought that you would do in your life. Touch your neck and say shift. It's important for you to shift. It's very important for you to shift. Okay? Are you hearing me? It's very important for you to shift. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's come in. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word. Thank you for everything that you have been through. Thank you for the things that you have invested in us and for them to come out sometimes it takes suffering and pain but we thank you that you said you never leave us nor forsake us you're always with us all the time in Jesus name we thank you Amen